we're in the season of uncertainty in, 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 in economics. We're in the season of uncertainty. Sometimes even in our life. But, but I need you to understand that the God you serve is a, is a provider. He is, he is Jehovah Jireh. He is the God that will provide for you. He will, he will sustain you. He will keep you. He will cover you. He, he, the Bible says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. On last week, we were blessed in the ministry of dance by our sister Jamie, and she danced to a song that you need to be encouraged by. God will provide. And whatever, whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're going through, whatever season you're in, Whatever seems to be overtaking you, whatever seems to be challenging you, whatever seems to be keeping you up at night, whatever seems to be trying to cause you to pull your hair out, whatever challenge of faith you're in, I need you to understand, God will provide for you. He will sustain you. Will you pull up a chair and come a little closer and be blessed? this ministry moment, God will provide. God provides, so why do I worry about my life? When you come to my rescue a thousand times, every other voice it is a lie. God provides. God provides in ways I can't explain and can't deny. The little that I have, he multiplies. Just when I feel he won't show up on time, God provides. He'll come through when the clouds of doubt rain down on you. Test everything you thought you knew. Now you finally see what God can do for you. So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. God provides It's hard to say when there's no food to eat Or what you see feels all that life will be And will this be another year of misery For me But my faith Can't survive on just things I see God provide, yeah. He will provide before your eyes. Oh, He will, He will.
Because he got a word, he was able to do something impossible. There's a word over your life that's getting ready to cause you to do something impossible. There's a word over your life that's getting ready to have you breaking generational curses that your family's been dealing with for years. There's a word over your life that's getting ready to cause you to break barriers. There's a word over your life. You don't hear me. And the word over your life is bigger and bolder and stronger than the detriment in your life. And it doesn't matter what you've dealt with and it doesn't matter what you've had to encounter. The word over your life is going to get you to the place and to the point. But here's what Peter messed up. He walked on the word while looking at the word but he allowed the distractions of the water and the winds and the waves to cause him to take his eyes off of Jesus. Come here. And whenever you take your eyes off of the Christ, whenever you take your eyes off of Jesus and look at what's contradicting you, you always begin to sink. You'll always begin to go down. And Jesus says, and he asked him a question, and here is the main premise. He said, Pete, when did you start doubting? He says, at 
what point you were walking fine when did you start doubting he says man when I took my eyes off of you why, why did Peter start doubting or why what moved Peter from faith to fear first principle he allowed the spirit of the boat to contaminate the movement of the miracle this is why Jesus told them in, in, in Matthew chapter 10 he says whenever you encounter rejection you got to shake it off because it's not wise to track negative spirits from a negative season into a place of progress because it will contaminate the progress y'all ain't saying nothing and there was so much fear in Peter's previous season in the season of the boat there was doubt in the boat amongst the other brothers and the text says they were terrified and they were scared and they confused God's presence with the ghost and whenever you get fear in your life to rule your life it'll confuse and make God look like something that's attacking you when it ever gets God is really pulling you into a whole new season he said Pete come here walk on this secondarily he allowed what he saw to become louder than what he heard and Jesus says come move jump launch get out of the ship it's your season to go from comfort to the unfamiliar but the unfamiliar is going to sustain you because there's a word over your life I don't know who I'm talking to I'm rooting for you I'm cheering for you God is obligated to provide for you there's a text in 1 Kings chapter 17 when the prophet Elijah has to go to Ahab and say hey God told me to tell you there's no dew or rain that's going to fall until I say so God told the prophet after he declared the word, he says, now you go to the brook Jared, and I'm going to take care of you, even in a famine. Hear me. The nation was in a famine, and God sent the prophet to the brook to be sustained, which says to me that those who really trust God, what's going on around them doesn't have to affect them. God has the capacity to, he says, I'm going to send ravens to you. He says, I'm going to ensure ravens will take care of you. And you got to understand, that's, that's a strange dichotomy. He said, the ravens going to bring you bread and meat. Well, ravens are meat eaters. They, they are predators. Why would a raven give up what he's supposed to eat? And God hit me. He says, man, in this season of provision for you, I'm going to surround you around people who normally had the spirit of selfishness but now they're going to be transformed into selflessness I'm going to put you around people who are going to care for you and support you the way you support other people he says I'm going to place you in a center and I'm going to place you around people who's going to support you and push you just as much as you pushed everybody else because sometimes it can get exhausting encouraging everybody else and nobody to strengthen you he says, in this season, I'm going to support you. And I'm going to give ravens, hear me, an assignment to provide for you. Because there's a word over your life that God is obligated to sustain. Whoever you are, and whatever you're in, it is just a test to see if you'll start walking. It is just a test to see if you'll jump out the boat. It is just a test to see if you'll follow God's instructions. When the brook dried up, God says, okay, now go to Zarephath. There's a widow woman that I've left there to sustain you. He says, I'm, I'm providing for you through ravens and through a widow. He gets to the widow and I'm out of here, y'all. He says, hey, um, can you bake me a cake first? She says, well, I only have a little bit of flour in, in, in a jar, a little bit of meal in a jar for me and my son and we're going to die. And the prophet says, no, 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 no. Bake me a cake first, and watch this. He says, and the barrel of meal won't waste. Hear me, don't miss the text. At first she declared that she had a little in a jar, but the prophet saw her little and didn't see a jar, he saw a barrel. And that if she walked in obedience, God would turn whatever little she had into a barrel of provision. Can I say this to you, that whatever in your life you think is a little bit, 
God is getting ready to infuse his anointing upon it and he's getting ready to supply it and multiply it abundantly he's getting ready to sin abundant your way God is your sustainer God is your provider God is your keeper God is your way maker God is your evidence he says I am will sustain you whoever you are I'm out of here the Lord told me to tell you and I done messed this whole sermon all up oh well I, I you know he's your keeper trust him he's got you covered lift your hands Father I pray for every person who's struggling in this season who's struggling in this particular time and I pray that your supernatural presence will begin to do the Isaiah 43 and 19 a new thing in your people in Jesus name
the going down thereof. His name alone is worthy to be praised. And they will call him Wonderful Counselor. They will call him Gentle Redeemer. They will call him a Comforter. Hallelujah. He is a great God. Yeah. Come on and bless him. Because he's great. Don't get tired of blessing him. Because he's not tired of blessing you. Come on and lift him up. It's time for our praises to rise from where you are. If that means you need to take it another level by standing on your feet, or if that means take it another level, opening your mouth from where you are, declare the atmosphere for your home. You have to take it, take the atmosphere, take it for your peace, take it for your joy, take it for the sake of the kingdom and what God is trying to do in your life. Come on, raise it to another level. Go deeper in him. Hallelujah is the highest praise. You can say, God, I thank you. You can say, Lord, I worship you. You can say, Father, I put nothing before you. You can say, I sacrifice any idol, anything I've, anything I've placed in front of you, above you. I place it on the altar of my home. And instead, I let my praise rise to exalt you, our Lord, Father. Let praises rise on the inside, on the inside of me. May you delight from the inside, from the inside of me. Set me on fire from the inside, from the inside of me. Lord, fill my life from the inside, from the inside of me. Cause all I
with a blessing. Just open your heart. 